Good evening, everyone, and welcome again to another Wednesday night Bible study here at Consuming Fires Teaching and Deliverance Ministries in Sacramento, California, where our pastor is Pastor Doris Harrell. I am Sister Jeanette Billion, and we continue our study in the book of Proverbs. On last week, we started the broken spirit. We are going over the, the human. We are studying about the broken spirit. So we're going to start out in press tonight. Before moving to depression, I'm just going to give a very brief recap of to bring us to depression because that's where we started out. Um, we did, Pastor gave us a additional foundational scripture to help up this study, which is Jeremiah 17 and 9. So Jeremiah 17 and, and 9 is another foundational scripture that we um, we study in within the broken spirit. So our foundation scripture for this entire lesson is Proverbs 1, 1 to 7, and I will read that. The Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel, to know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding, to receive instruction of wisdom, justice, and judgment, and equity, to give subtly to the simple, the young man, knowledge and discretion. A wise man will hear and will end his learning, and a man of understanding shall gain unto wise counsel. To understand a proverb and the interpretation, the words of the wise and their dark sayings. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. And we thank you and we ask God to bless the reading of his word. So that is our entire, that's our whole study. Uh, foundational scripture is Proverbs 1, 1 through 7. So now we're going to continue on in our study of the broken spirit. On last week, we learned that you cannot heal a broken spirit with natural resource. So we're going to continue on that study tonight, picking up at depression. But before we move on to depression, our, um, our opening scripture is Proverbs 15 and 13. And it is, a merry heart makes a cheerful countenance, but by sorrow of the heart, the spirit is broken. The introduction for this lesson is, most people are motivated either for good or bad more from their emotions than their intellect. Not because emotion is stronger than intellect, but because such motivation is easier of the two. Emotional motivation is not necessarily a good thing. That cross-reference was in Proverbs 28 and 26. The complexities of life are so great and the problems so heavy that the more we face them, the more mixed up we become. Therefore, it is imperative to keep our hearts and emotions under control rather than ruled by them. And that is found in Proverbs 4 and 23 and also Jeremiah 17 and 9 reference. So then we went on speaking about a broken spirit and what it can do to people because it can have someone to want to give up. The heart it can become overly sorrowful and the spirit is broken. It can break a person's will their desire, and their vitality, rendering them to no positive things, just almost a negative life because of the spirit being broken. 
We found out that they can't help themselves, nor can they help others. We found those foundational scriptures is Proverbs 18 and 14. It's difficult to share because most of man's feelings are only known by himself and God. And sometimes those feelings try to camouflage, you know, um, to hide themselves or to disguise themselves. So a person may try to disguise, you know, something in place of the brain and acknowledging what's really happening. They can begin to try to hide what's going on and camouflage the feelings, which ultimately renders them even more um, potential to harm. They're difficult to cheer up. And a lot of times when you attempt to cheer someone who has a broken spirit, the, the result can worsen the condition. We found that out in Proverbs 25 and 20. So they're difficult to even try to cheer up. Then we went on to figure to uh, study about some things that can actually contribute to a broken spirit. Um, fear can is one of the contributors of a broken spirit. Um, the, fail, the, the fear of failure, feeling inadequate, feeling inferior. We also learned last week on how important it is for fathers, meaning fathers and mothers, not to provoke their children. Um, I believe it was um, to anger and didn't want them to become discouraged. So we realized last week how important it is for we as parents not be a traitor to not only our children, but to anyone's spirit, uh, broken spirit. We spoke about guilty, how a guilty conscience sometimes can also lead one's um, broken spirit. That scripture was 28, 1. We also cross reference uh, Proverbs 3, 21, 24 through 26. Then we went on to, to read about, um, I'm sorry, and there was a cross-reference of John 1 and 9. There was another cross-reference of John 1 and 9. Then we went on to study on anxiety and way the worries and how someone becomes just, just, uh, just overly, you know, worried and just broken down in worry, just worrying about this, and then it becomes a depressed, a depressing uh, anxiety, it begins to eat away at the person's spirit until it finally just zooms them up, worries and the troubles wear them down until they finally break the spirit of, of the person. That cross-reference was Matthew 6, 25 through 34, Psalms 12, 25. I'm sorry, Proverbs 12, 25, Psalms 37, 1 through 11, and 1 Peter 5 and 7. There was also an additional cross-reference of Philippians 4 and 6 on anxiety, speaking about being anxious for nothing. You don't need to be anxious for anything, but with but in all things by prayer and supplication and thanksgiving to our Father, and we can let our request be known. So that was a brief recap of what we studied on last week. So now we are going to move on to depression, and we found out a brief about depression which is often self-inflicted. Depression can be self-inflicted and, and oftentimes it is, then worsens by neglecting responsibilities, resentment and self-pity and the list just goes on. And what happens is it's just a downward spiral that ultimately causes a person to break his own spirit. So depression is a little different from 
the other areas, the fears and the anxieties, because those can be about by other people or by other things, by other situations, by other you know um, scenarios in life. But we find that often depression comes from one's stuff when they neglect their responsibilities. You know, they become, uh, they, be, they begin to pity themselves, you know, and um, it can cause, it can ultimately cause someone to break his own spirit. So we are begin to read on depression the first scripture we're going to read is going to be found in proverbs 12 and 25 so sister smart yes if you will start out reading tonight mm -hmm. we're going to have you read proverbs 12 and 25 mm -hmm. yes Okay. And then, Sister Gloria, we're going to have you read Proverbs 15 and 15. And then, Sister Diana, we will have you Proverbs 15 and 13. Okay. So, Sister Smart is 12 and 25. Mm -hmm. Sister Gloria, 15 and 15, and Sister Diana is going to be 15 and 13. And so we are going to learn what God teaches us about prayer. How we can possibly, what we can put in place of self you know, what we can put in play of building, you know, responsibility. What we can do to prevent ourselves from breaking our own spirit. So, Sister um, Smart, whenever you're ready. Okay. Proverbs 12 and 25 reads, Heaviness in the hearts of a man maketh it stoop, but a good word maketh it, it glad. So we learned last week, um, mm -hmm. thank you, Sister Mark. We learned last week about how the heaviness of the heart makes a man to stoop. It stoops them over. It weighs them down. It just bows. It just makes them to stoop. They're not able to hold themselves up because their heart is heavy, you know, heavy with worry, be with regret. Heavy with resentment, heavy with self pity, heavy with fear. Just all of these contributors make our heavy, causing the person, the man, to stoop over. However, but a good word maketh it glad. And so a good word helping help lighten the person. It's 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 happy, it makes you feel light. It's the exact opposite of weighing you down. It does more like lifting you up. So that's one way God is teaching us to have a good word. A good word makes you feel good. A good word makes you glad. It lightens up your life. It lightens up you. And it helps actually to lighten up others around you. So thank you, Sister Smart. So we have um, Sister Gloria, if you would be 15 and 15 when you're ready. Proverbs 15 and 15. All the days of the yeah. afflicted are evil, but he that is of merry heart hath a continual feast. Amen. So here, all the days of the afflicted are evil. When you just afflicted, afflicted with pain, afflicted oh, with stuff, God. and afflicted. I'm tired. You okay? Where that yeah. was? <laughs> okay. Afflicted with pain, afflicted with suffering. It just it's the all are evil. 
Okay, I see your hand, Sister Smart. One moment. And so um, all the days of the afflicted are evil. But he that is of a merry heart hath a continual feast. So when your heart is merry and you're happy, you have a continual feast, a continual feast of joy, a continual feast of happiness, a continual feast of hope. It does just the opposite of weighing you down. It brings you up a continual feast of good things, of blessings and things that are good to you and good for you. So we want to, the days of the afflicted are evil, but we want to have a merry heart and have a continual feast. Sister, did you not want your hand to be up? I see you raised. You no, lowered. I didn't. I made a mistake and touched the hand thing. Oh, okay. 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 So now, Sister Diana, you are going to read um, Proverbs 15 and 13, please. A happy heart makes the face cheerful, but heartache crushes the spirit. A happy heart makes the face cheerful, but a, you said, can you read your, your translation over? A happy heart makes the face cheerful, but heartache crushes the spirit. Okay. So heartache crushes the spirit. That's a good reading. I like that translation because you can actually like, envision the crushing because of the heaviness of the heart. It crushes the sense spirit. So a happy face or a happy heart maketh your hat your face happy. So when 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 your heart when your heart is merry, when your heart is light, when your heart is happy, you show that. You you wear that. You walk in that. But when the heart is heavy, it crushes the spirit and really lines up with about it being a downward spiral that ultimately causes a person to break his own spirit. So the King James Version reads, a merry heart maketh a cheerful countenance. I like that happy face because it's very clear. But a sorrow of the heart, this but by sorrow of the heart, the spirit is broken. And as Sister Diana's translation read, the spirit it crushes the spirit. So God's word teaches us the things that we can do to keep from inflicting depression upon ourselves the things that we can do to avoid the brokenness of our own spirit. We don't want to neglect ourselves. And, and, and neglecting your responsibility includes neglecting yourself. I know that a lot of times it's yeah. hard for people to think of their responsibilities being to themselves. You know, you feel you got a responsibility to your children, you got a responsibility to your spouse, you got a responsibility to your parents, to your job, but you also have a responsibility to yourself. And that is one that is often neglected. Mm -hmm. Then once you neglect it, a lot of times you become resentful because mm -hmm. neglecting your own self gains you nothing with no one else. It doesn't make anybody feel better towards you. It doesn't make anybody love you more. It doesn't make anybody give you more, care for you more. It absolutely does not do that. It does absolutely nothing except for tear you down, begin to make you feel resentful, then after resentment has set in, then here comes self-pity, the self-destruction and the ultimate break of a person of your own spirit. So we don't want to do that. 
we don't want to find ourselves in that situation. We want to allow God to love us through, to take us through. We're going to be reading about all of that as we put the pieces back together. But before we go on to putting the pieces back together, I'm going to ask, Pastor, is there anything that you would like to share on the lesson thus far? So I'm going to no, open I'm just, it up for you. <laughs> Thank you. I'm just anxious to get in here putting those pieces back together with God. I'm just, that's, that's where it is right there. Praise God. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. And that is hope. So now we know what a broken spirit is, or we have some type of idea of what a broken spirit is. Now let's learn about how we put the pieces back together again. Because once something is broken, you have to fix it. You have to put the pieces back together. You have to make it whole because it's broken. So the first thing you're going to have to do is trust God. That's the first thing you're going to have to do. I'm going to call on the readers again. Um, Deaconess, we're going to start with you. You are going to read Proverbs 16 and 3. Right now? You're, you're muted, sister. Then we will start again. You will read Proverbs 29 and 25. You have to say it again. Sister, Sister Gloria. Oh, I'm sorry. Can you guys hear me now? I'm muted. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Yes, we can hear you okay. now. Okay. So the first one is we're going to have to trust God. That's the first thing that's required of us to put our life, put our pieces back together is because, again, we're going to reiterate that the spirit is from God. So only God can heal the spirit. He is the giver of the spirit and the spirit returns back to him. So Proverbs 16 and 3, Deaconess, that's you. 29 and 25 is Sister Smart. 23 and 26 is Sister Gloria. And 28 and 26 is Sister Diana. And then we're going to read an additional scripture, Ecclesiastes 12 and 7. So whenever you're ready, the deaconess. All right. Proverbs 16 and 3 read, commit thy works unto the Lord and thy thoughts shall be established. Amen. So that's the first thing we're going to have to do is commit our works unto the Lord so that he can establish our thoughts, so that he can give us those positive thoughts, so that he can give us those thoughts of life that's going to take us and give us good thoughts things, not those thoughts of depression, the anxieties, and the fears. Now we're talking about putting our pieces back together. First thing we're going to do is commit our works unto the Lord, Amen. and we're going to allow him to establish our thoughts. Lord. Now, Sister, Di uh, Sister Smart, you have 29 and 25. Yes, and 29 and 25 reads, the fear of man bringeth a snare, but whosoever put his trust in the Lord shall be safe. Amen. So right there, when you fear man, it bringeth a snare. We don't need to be fearing man. Mm -hmm. So the fear of man bringeth a snare, a trap, a snare, getting caught up in something. But whoso putteth his trust in the Lord shall be safe. He will keep us. He will keep us safe. He will hide us. He will take care of us. 23 and 26. 
We're talking about putting the pieces back together. 23 and 26, Sister Gloria. Arcadel. Uh oh. Wait, I was muted. I was there muted. Yes, 23, 23 and 26. My son, give me thine heart and let thine eyes observe my ways. Thank you, Lord. He's asking us, my son, give me thine heart. You don't have to have your heart heavy. You don't have to have your heart worry, uh, weighed down and burdened down. My son, give me thine heart and let thine eyes observe my ways. So let our eyes, last, last week we learned about the eye gate and how we don't want everything coming into our eye gate. We don't want to run to see everything, you know, because of the ability that once you see it, you can't unsee it. And it, it has the potential to, well, it has the ability to just replay, replay, replay. But if we observe, if we let our eyes observe the Lord's way, then he will lead us into all of the places that we need to go. We, we, he'll, he'll, he'll avoid us. He'll take us, he'll take us away from the uh, depression. He'll take us, he'll, he'll guide us away. I see your hand, Sister Smart. He'll guide us away from the depression. He'll guide us away from the fear. He'll guide us, he'll take us and, and walk us through in a very beautiful, beautiful way. Yes, Sister Smart. So I wanted to read it from my other version. Okay. The, and, it, and it reads, my son, pay close attention and gladly follow my example. Hmm. My son, pay that? close attention. And pay gladly. close attention. Mm -hmm. And gladly follow my example. Mm -hmm. so pay close attention to me. Watch me. In order for you to learn anything, thank you, Sister Smart, for reading that. In order for you to learn even when we was in class, you had to pay attention because if you don't pay attention, then you don't get it. Whenever we're not paying attention, we miss something. In order for us to get it, we got to pay attention. And then we want to gladly follow his example because he is, he, he came to give us the example. So we want to gladly follow his example. Amen. Thank you, Sister Smart. Now we have Sister Diana, you have 28 and 26. You're muted. Yes, you so are. glad you're, you're off the ball tonight. <laughs> okay. It's okay. <laughs> what? 28 and 26, did you say, Sister Jeanette? Yes, ma'am. Okay, 28, 26. Okay. Uh, those who trust in themselves are fools, but those who walk in wisdom are kept safe. Amen. Mm -hmm. So those who trust, amen, right? Those who trust in themselves are fools. Yeah. But those who walk in wisdom will be kept safe. There's that safe word again. Because when we walk in our own, we get pulled astray. It's the same thing when you fear a man and there's the snare. But it's the same when we fear our soul, we walk away. We are a man when we walk in our own way. We, it's not good. And the, and the um, King James Version says, he that trusted in his own heart is a fool. So there it is, trusting in your own heart again. And, and, and that's how you come into those snares. And we, we know that we were not created to direct our own steps. 
but whoso walketh wisely, he shall be delivered. So not only are you, so you're going to be safe, you're going to be delivered, you're going to be directed away from all of the snare, you're going to be safe and delivered. Amen. And then we are going to read Ecclesiastes 12 and 7. Because this is about putting the pieces back together and about trusting in God and about the spirit. We're, we're speaking about trusting in God because of that broken spirit. So this is where Proverbs 12 and 7. Then shall the dust return to the earth as it was. And the spirit shall return unto God who gave it. So the spirit is going to return to God because he is the giver of the spirit. That's exactly why when you have a broken spirit, you can't use natural um, resources to heal a broken spirit. Only God can heal your spirit because he is the giver of your spirit. Now we're going to speak about wisdom. So you know you're going to have to trust in God and you're going to have to, then you're going to have to utilize wisdom. First, you're going to have to accept wisdom and all you can accept wisdom is that you accept God. That's the only way you're going to be able to walk in wisdom. In the right wisdom. There's, 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 a, there's a different wisdom, but we don't want that. We want our wisdom straight from the Lord, straight from heaven. So we have Proverbs 3, 21, 26. I'll read that one. So Proverbs 3, 20, starting at verse 21. My son, let them not depart from thy eyes. Keep sound wisdom and discretion. We spoke about that last week, about not letting wisdom and discretion depart from your eyes. Talking about that eye gate again. So shall thy, so shall they be life unto thy soul and grace to thy neck. Because when we let our eyes stay on wisdom and discretion, it's going to be life unto our soul and grace unto our neck. So we're not going to have to be weighed down with, with, with yokes and heavy burdens because we're going to keep our eyes set on sound wisdom and discretion. Then shall thou walk in thy way safely and thy foot shall not stumble because when we keep our eyes observed on the ways of the Lord, we can walk safely in our way and our foot will not stumble because he's directing our steps. He's telling us where to go. We're observing his way and we will be safe and our feet will not stumble. The foot will not stumble. When thou layest down, Thou shalt not be afraid. We're not going to be afraid. I see your hand, Deaconess. When we lay us down, we shall not be afraid. Yea, thou shalt lie down and thy sleep shall be sweet. We remember that talking about that guilty conscience last week. About, you know, you can't even sleep. People sleep. They looking over their shoulder because their sleep is broken because of the guilty conscience. And your sleep shall be sweet. Be not afraid of sudden fear, neither of, des neither of the desolation of the wicked when it cometh. For the Lord shall be thy confidence and shall keep thy foot from being taken. So we want to make sure that our eyes stay on wisdom and discretion so that we can walk safely and our sleep can be sweet. We won't be afraid of sudden fear, and we know that the Lord is our confidence. Yes, deaconess. 
I just wanted to make a comment when I was uh, reading and studying on the scripture. Um, it, it uh, you know, we are under God's protection. This is what, what, um, when I was reading first, we're under God's protection and we have a holy security. So I love that. On this, we got a holy security. Amen. Are under his protection as long as we keep our our eyes stayed on him and meditate on this word. So that's all yes, I want. Yes, yes. Amen. No, thank you for sharing that because we need to know that that we're under God's protection and that we are under a holy security under his angels that he encamp around us. So we're not under just a natural this isn't natural. We're talking about spiritual. Next, we're going to speak about hope, faith, and love. So I am going to have Sister Smart, if you are going to read about hope, faith, and love, and you're going to read Proverbs 13, 12, and 19. So it's Proverbs 12, 13, 12, and 19. Okay. All right. Let's see. Proverbs 13. Proverbs 13 and 12 reads, Hope defers, maketh the heart sick. But when when the despise cometh, it is a trigger. Can you hear me? When the desire. When the desire oh, cometh. Oh, oh, excuse me. Uh, let me start over. Hope defers make it okay. the, hope deferred maketh the heart sick. But when the despise make cometh. Desire. It, desire. Why do I want to say despise? Desire okay. cometh, it is the tree of life. And the uh, next one is 26. No, 19. Excuse me? It's 19. Oh, oh, oh I'm, I'm, okay, okay I'm, up, I'm above. Okay, the next one is 19. The this, this desire accomplished is sweet to the soul, but it is abomination to fools to to apart from evil. That's it. Okay. I'm so yeah, sorry, I'm Sister surprised. Smart. I got kicked off. Can you read 19 again, okay. please? Okay. The desire accomplished is sweet to the soul, but it is abomination to fools to apart from evil. Amen. So here we have hope. So we're going to go back up to, because we're talking about hope, faith, and love. Mm -hmm. So in 12, it says, hope deferred maketh the heart sick. You know, it does the opposite because deferred means that it's something, it's not gone anywhere. It's mm -hmm. just deferred. And we made that, um, and one of our lessons or at some point, you know, we were speaking about like loans. When someone has a loan, a student loan, you can get that loan payment deferred. It doesn't take it away. You still have the loan. It's just deferred. It's the same mm -hmm. thing with your hope. When your hope is deferred, it makes your heart sick. It's st you still have the hope. It's just deferred. It's, it's something happening to keep you from feeling. It's blocking almost. Mm -hmm. It's like something that it's 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 um it's blocked and you don't get to feel it. So, but when the desire cometh, it's a tree of life. But when you get, oh, it's like a tree of life. All of a sudden you just, woo, because you got it. It's like when we're going through something and then when God takes us through and we come out of it and delivers us, it's like, woo, it's, it's, that. you get that excitement. You get that satisfaction. You just get that, oh my God, we did it, you know, and you're, and your soul is is satisfied 
And the same thing with the desire accomplished is sweet to the soul. When the desire is accomplished, it's sweet to the soul, but it is an abomination to fools to depart from evil. So it's sad, but you know, a fool just is against him to depart from evil. He just got to it's just an abomination to fools to depart from evil. They just feel like they can't. It's just, it's, it's, it goes against them to depart from evil. So amen on that one. And I am going to read 1 Corinthians 13 and 3. And it's about love. So Proverbs 13, I'm sorry, Proverbs 13 and 13. And this is what God tells us to do. And now abideth faith, hope, charity. These three, but the greatest of these three is charity, which is love. So that is, and in my Bible, it has the heading, the way of love. So we want to abide in faith and in hope and in charity, in love. And that is how we put the pieces back together again. We also want to maintain a positive mental outlook which is crucial and critical and imperative. We have to maintain a positive mental outlook. So on Proverbs 14 and 13, Sister Gloria, if you would please read Proverbs 14 and 30. 14 and 30. Okay, Proverbs 14 and 30. A sound and, uh, heart. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, 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 you're fine. And then, Sister Diana, you are going to read Proverbs 15, 15 and 30. And then, yeah, Deacon, and 30. we'll finish okay. up, up with Proverbs 17 and 22. Uh, Sister Gloria, you're going to start us out with 14 and 30. Sister Diana, you're going to do 15, 15 and 30. And Deaconess, you're going to finish us up with 17 and 22. And this is about speaking to us to maintain a positive mental outlook. So Sister Gloria, whenever you're ready. Proverbs 14 and 30. A sound heart is the life of the flesh but envy the rottenness of the bones. There you have it. A sound heart is the life of the flesh. We know that we have to maintain our bodies. Our bodies have to be maintained. So we want a sound heart so that it can provide life to our bodies, to the flesh, to, to our person. And that is maintaining a positive mental outlook. And now, um, Sister Diana, you can do 15 and 15. Fifteen and fifteen? I thought you said fifteen and thirty. No, you're doing 15, 15, and 30. You're reading two verses. Oh, 15 and 15 and 15 and 30. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Right now? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, 15 and 15. Um, all the days of the oppressed are wrenched, but the cheerful heart has a continual feast. Oh, wrenched. Ooh, we, that was a different reading. We read that scripture earlier. <laughs> and all of the days of the afflicted are wrenched. That's a, that's a strong word that, um, that, yeah, that's the same thing though. It has the same meaning, evil. It's just, that's, it's just, it's wrenched. Um, 
but they'll but the heart of the Mary have a continual feast. Can so I again, ask, we want to maintain that. Yes, ma'am. Can I ask a wretch? Spell, you spell know, that word, uh, Diana. Wretch. Spell that word. It's um. W, let's see, what happened? Oh, W-R-E-T-C-H-E-D, wretched. Wretched. Right? Yeah, wretched. Wretched. Uh -huh. wretched. Yeah, I mean, that means real bad. So, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah wretched. wretched. That, yeah, yes. Save the Amen, wretched Pastor. like me. He yes, saved the yes, like yes. Me. <laughs> yes, yes, okay. yes, amen. Okay, and then we do 15 and 30. Do I do that now? Yes, ma'am. Light in the messenger's eyes brings joy to the heart and good news gives health to the bones. Oh, light in the messenger's eyes. Can you read that one more time? Uh-huh. Light in the messenger's eyes brings joy to the heart and good news gives health to the bones. Amen. So light in the messenger's eyes brings um, life to the heart or joy to the heart. To the heart. Uh, like that, that, to the heart. And, a, and, the, and what suffering in the bones? And good news gives health to the bones. Health, health, that's the word. Yes. Health to the bones. And good news gives health to the bones. And remember, we were reading back a couple of when it was about dry bones and how brittle they are. And your and this scripture speaks about how it brings health to the bones. You know, it keeps our bones flexible and, and allows us to be able to move where we don't have to be heavy down and weighed down and stooped over. So in King James, it reads, the light of the eyes rejoices the heart. And yours spoke about the messenger. Um, and, and then, and a good report, make it the bones fat. And yours spoke about bringing health to the bones. So when you just bring those all together, oh my God. That helps you to just maintain. We're, spot, we're still talking about that mental, that, that positive mental outlook. We have to have that positive mental outlook. And then Deaconess, I believe you're going to finish us up with 20, 17 and 22. Yes, and it's, I'm reading the Amplified Version. Okay. A happy heart is good medicine. And a cheerful mind works healing, but a broken spirit dries up the bones. Oh, we were just speaking about that drying the bones and, and the difference where Sister Diana's, you know, the good messenger brings joy to the heart and good news, health to the bones. And then just the opposite excuse me, about that broken spirit dries the bones and make the bones brittle and make them easy to break. And, you know, they become fragile. And so we want to make sure that we do the merry heart. I know your translation reads different. I'm going to read King James and then I'm going to have you read yours over, Deacon. A merry heart doeth a merry heart doeth good like a medicine, but broken bones, but 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 a broken spirit dryeth the bones. So a merry heart, we were speaking about that happy heart, that good heart, that good sound place, that sound heart, that place where you just solid and you're just good. And it it's like a good medicine, it just does your heart good. But again, but a broken spirit dryeth the bones. We don't want our bones to be broken. We, bo we want our bones to have health. We want, we want um, the messenger to bring light and the eyes bring, bring joy to the heart. We just want to keep that heart because we learned earlier about guarding your heart. Now, if you will read that one more time, and then we're going to go on down to E and about uh, talking to a friend, and we'll be ready for our discussion. 
a happy heart is good medicine and a cheerful mind work its works healing, but a broken spirit dries up the bones. And oh. I miss that part about a cheerful mind. Read uh, that cheerful mind. Yes, that's because we're doing a positive mental outlook. It says they yes, have heart, Lord. good medicine and a cheerful mind works healing. Amen. Dries up the bone. Yes, a cheerful mind works healing. Speaking about that positive mental outcome. Oh, I'm so glad you read that over because. Positive mental, we're talking about the mind. That's our mental. We're talking about have, keeping that cheerful mind, keeping that mind healthy where it can heal. Because if you if you don't keep, you keep a positive outlook, other things just creep in and they just, they just go to work. They just go to work and they just work, run havoc. And so then, Sister Smart, I see your hand and then we're going to do... Um, talk and listen. Okay, I just wanted to read it from uh, the uh, that uh, New English version. It says, uh, "Let me see, where am I? I lost my spot." Proverbs fifteen and twenty-two. Proverbs fifteen and twenty-two. Oh, up to page thirty. Nineteen and twenty-two. Okay, here we no, go. Seventeen and seventeen 22. and twenty-two. There it is. Amen. Okay, if you are cheerful you feel good. But if you are sad, you hurt all over. Ooh. Thank you. Uh -huh. Amen. If you're cheerful, you feel good. If you're sad, you hurt all over. That's a thank you so much because when you're cheerful, you do feel good. You feel light again. You feel light. You can move. You're flexible. But when you're sad, you hurt all over. You just... It just weighs you down. Sadness does hurt. Sadness hurts. Thank you so much for reading that. So now we're at our last E, talk and listen to friends. Don't just make it a pity party. So we don't want to just make it a pity party. We want to get people who we trust people who we know have our best interest at heart. You don't want to share your inner emotions with just anyone. You don't want to, Sister Smart, your hand is still up. Did you, did you want it up? Okay. Um, so you want to speak to someone who you trust because you have to realize you're sharing a very intimate part of yourself. So you don't want to just share it with anybody. You want to talk to a person that you trust. You want to you want them first of all to be whole. That's the first part. We don't want to get past that. We don't want to go to another broken person and start because one broken person Amen. can't help another broken person. Amen. That's the first part. We want to make sure that that person is not broken. So that scripture is found in 20, uh, Proverbs 27 and 9. And I will go on and read the last one. Ointment and perfume rejoice the heart. So doeth the sweetness of a man's friend by her counsel. So ointment and perfumes rejoice the heart. And you know, you think about that. When you rubbing on something or when you spraying on something, it does make you feel good when you just spraying a little bit of perfume. That's something, I didn't think about that, but when you stop and you think about it, it does, it, re it just, Makes you feel good. So just like that does, so does the sweetness of a man's friend by hearty counsel. Hearty. And we know hearty is not light. Hearty is something, it's, it's hearty has substance to it. 
Hardy has, um, it has something that can withstand. You know, when you go have a hearty meal, you know, it's, it's hearty. It's not anything that's light. It's not something that's going to be easily um, broken or easily um, mistreated. Because again, you realize that you're going to your friend with a broken spirit. Again, we want to make sure that we're trusting someone with a hearty counsel to entrust or wise counsel to entrust our feelings with. Yes, Pastor. I see your hand. Well, yeah, I just have it up because I, I want to, um, what I want to do is, um, we, we don't want to do the questions now because we would be trying to rush them. So why okay. don't you just uh, assign the, di the discussion question for next week? Okay. Okay. Because we don't want to rush this. Amen. Okay. And um, okay. When, okay. when you get a, when you get through with that, I, I do have just a, a, a brief thing to say. Okay. All right. Okay. 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 So thank you, pastors. So that actually completes our lesson on broken spirit of the heart. Again, you know, put the pieces of your life back together by trusting in God, utilizing wisdom, abiding in hope, faith, and love, maintain positive mental outlook and talk and listen to a good friend. Amen. So now we are going to go for our discussion questions. Pastor, did you want to record the, the assigning of the questions or did you want to go forth and then we would come off of the recording to assign the, the questions? Let me just say what I was going to say. Yeah, that's a good, good thing. And then we will uh, assign the questions. Okay, what I want to do okay. is go back to, uh, and this is a great lesson. Uh, I thank God for it. Hey, it's three parts. That's, the phrase. That's wonderful. Um, so I want to go back to, um, where is that at? Uh, Proverbs 13, where the hope deferred that's that's mm -hmm. a dark place, mm -hmm. and um, and and everything that we've been talking about is how to get through that, how to get through that dark place, and all all what you were saying here is that you have to trust in God, use wisdom, and have a positive mental outlook, and and how you get that it, it, it's right here, in in Proverbs thirteen and twelve. Um, where it says hope deferred makes the heart sick. You just now that's when a person is going through it, through that sorrow, through that grief, through that depression, through the broken spirit. You're going through those emotions. You're depressed. Your anxiety, fear, all of that. When you're going through it, it's dark, and you can't really see your your, your way through it. But one thing I found out is that you always get through it. This is what you have to remember. That's that sound mental outlook. All of us have gone through things. And at the moment that they're happening, the time that they're happening, it seems like everything else is blotted out. But the, the positive mental outlook is that you have to remember that this has happened before and you always got through it, always. And God, God is the one that got you to it. And just like it happened then, even when you're going through it, if you could just remember, I know it's going to end. I know it's going to end. I have to wait on the Lord. He's going to get me through it. And he always. We have to clean that on Monday, don't we? Man, I hope I feel okay. When Robert. Oh, oh. <laughs> Praise oh. God. We're going to pray for this. We're going to pray for Sister Diana after. <laughs> yeah, we hope you feel okay, too. But we're going to pray for you, Sister God, which yeah. I understand. But see, as, as one who have been through this broken uh, spirit, you have to always remember 
and and when you're going through it, that's when you can't trust your emotions. Mm -hmm. you, when you're going through the dark place, you cannot trust your emotions. You have to have a sound mental outlook and know you've been there before and God always got you through. So that's why it says hope deferred makes the heart sick going through it, you know, and you wonder, is it, I mean, how long is this going to last or, or whatever? But then you have to remember, you always got through it in the past. Always. Never without a doubt did you not come through on the other side. That's what you have to remember when you're going through it. Amen. Yes. And it says, but when the desire comes, it's a tree of life. Woo! When you get through it, on when you get to that yes. other side, yes. and you get through, God's going to get you through Thank there. You, Lord. you just yes. don't want to be miserable while you're going through this. So you have to have that. Right in the middle of it, you have to know. Even though those feelings may have you depressed and all that, you have to know that he's going to get you through it. Yes. Because that's what the Bible says. And so uh, the, the uh, 2326, and this is how you do it. You give your heart 2326. This is just kind of tying everything to, together, Sister Jeanette. Uh, okay, thank you, Pastor. Yes, 2326. It's and and God says, give me your heart. And remember that heart in this context are your emotions and that mind. That's that part of that soul of yours. That's your mind is going crazy. Your emotions are out of whack and all this kind of, all these fears and all this, all that stuff and things. God said, give it to me. Give me your heart and let your eyes observe my ways. And so when you're going through it, instead of letting those emotions um, control, instead of letting the devil torment your mind, realize that you've been through this before, you've observed God's ways already because he brings you through every time. Every time, that's that sound mind. That's what God is doing. He's tying mm -hmm. all this lesson together. That and, and, and those three scriptures right there just ties it up. We've been that way before. I have been through it. I mean, you, 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 you get these things in life. Now, this is not just for the broken spirit, but for disappointments. You know, you go through, that's why, says the fear of man is a snare. You know, don't fear man. You know, put uh, your hope in God yeah, and uh, give your yeah. heart. I love it. You know, I don't know if I ever saw this scripture before. I had to have seen it. Mm. But by golly, look at that. My son, give me your heart. Yeah. Give me your heart. Woo, Lord have mercy. That's like a deaconess's picture. You know, somebody said about that picture there, it says, uh, those are footprints in the sand. Yes. And uh, the man saw the picture and told God, uh, I was there walking alone and where was you, God? And Jesus said, them weren't your footprints. That was me carrying you. Yes, Lord. Oof. That was me carrying you. You were so broken. I had to carry you. Mm. So he always I'm a witness. Mm -hmm. When you're in the ministry, things come to you from left, right, back. Uh, uh. God always brings you through. Yes. And that's the sound mind is Amen. in the middle of that. Amen. Of that. Right in the middle of it. So that's a beautiful lesson. So yeah. it looks like this is three parts and we're very excited about it. <laughs> Amen. So, yeah. Also, right, that's what I wanted to say. Praise God. Amen. Said, oh, Thank you, Pastor. How to suffer rightly. He teaches us how to suffer in a righteous way. And that's my Thank prayer. You, my prayer. Teach me to suffer righteously. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, everyone for your participation in this lesson and it is it is a it's a beautiful lesson it's it's you know we thank you pastor for um even going through the preparation the first one that you did the preparation with the songs and and just preparing us for this lesson 
and all of the participation of it. So this is going to conclude um, the broken spirit. And um, we just hope that, you know, you will find your way, God, and know that only God can heal the spirit because he is the giver of the spirit. Thank you. And um, Pastor, you want to stop the recording?